guys, Corey Smith here, CoreFX. Just doing another quick video for you guys here. Uh, today's topic I wanted to cover was moving averages. Just want to do a quick little video of which moving averages I use and how I use them. Um, I'm going to start off with just going over which two moving averages I use because I mainly only use two. Occasionally I'll use a 200 day moving average, but the main two that I use is going to be a simple moving average and it's going to be 20 and 50 period. So basically the way these work, you got the blue line here is going to be the 20, the red line here is going to be the 50. And what a moving average does basically is it takes the past for the 20 moving average, we'll say. It takes the past 20 periods, which are candles in this case, it takes the past 20 candles and then averages them together to give you a line, a number represented by this line to give to show you the movement of price. Uh, the average movement of price over that period of time. And the exact same thing with the 50 SMA. It's, it's just going to be 50 periods instead of 20 periods. So the 20 SMA is going to be a, more of our short-term um, moving average. It's going to track short-term movements uh, for, you know, intraday and swing traders. And then you've got the 50 period SMA, which is going to be more of an intermediate term moving average um, for more swing traders and position traders. And it's not going to react as quickly to price as the uh, 20 SMA. So the way I use these, the first way I use them is going to be for trend analysis. And basically the moving averages are a very, very highly used tool. Most traders use them. And um, most traders main use for them is in fact um, the trend analysis. So I have a uh, tool that I use that I teach my students that I'm not going to share in this video because uh, I want to keep that exclusively for my students. I have a tool that I use based on price action and the simple moving averages that gives me an objective way to determine if it's an uptrend or a downtrend so that there's no, oh, this might be an uptrend, this might be in a downtrend. I have a clear set of rules that determine right without any questions asked, black or white, is an uptrend or is it a downtrend? And I use these moving averages to do that. Um, but without going into exact details on how I use it, you can use there's a couple different things. For one, you can use the crossovers of them. So if the blue line 20 SMA crosses under the red line 50 SMA, that's usually a bearish bearish cross signal, and that usually means price is going to start to go down. And then the exact opposite for if you see the 20 SMA cross above the 50 SMA, blue cross above the red, that's a bullish signal, and that's usually a sign to buy and that price is going to be going up. Now you're not going to buy or sell every crossover of the moving averages because that's not enough probability stacked on your side, but that's just one of the uses for it. Um, you can also use position of the SMAs. If the 20 is above the 50, generally speaking, that is a bullish, that is an uptrend. And vice versa, if the 20 blue moving average is below the 50 red moving average, that's generally speaking a downtrend. Um, another way for trend analysis to use these is you can determine the momentum of how strong a move is by the slope of the moving average. As you can see here with some of these downward moves, it's pretty steep. And then it flattens out a little bit, and then it's steep, and it flattens out a little bit. As you can see here with this massive move, we had weeks straight of nonstop bull moves right here. This was after the election with Trump, back when Trump got elected in uh, early November. And it shot all the way through the end of 2017, and uh, into 2016. And you can see that there. Look at the slope of that 20 SMA. Pulling further and further away from the 50 SMA, that's showing crazy strong momentum. One thing that that prices will always do in any equity, any stock, any bond, any Forex, anything. The, it's called mean reversion. Prices will always revert back to the mean. Prices will always come back to the moving averages. This is just, uh, Foreign currencies are the strongest trending markets by far, and you will see strong sustained moves like this, but it will inevitably always come to an end. So we have the 20 SMA, the 50 SMA, short term, intermediate term. There's also 200 day moving average. I don't usually have that on my charts just because I like my chart to be nice and clean. But the 200 SMA is uh, a very, very big um, area to watch on charts for our next point that I use SMAs for, and that's going to be dynamic support and resistance. So I'm sure you all know support and resistance, what they are. And what a dynamic support and resistance is, is basically means it's changing with the price. It's dynamic. It's constantly moving and changing. And as you can see, when, when price moves in an uptrend, it reverts back to the mean, as I was saying. And a perfect example would be um, right in here, where as you can see, 
price came down, hit the 50 SMA, failed to pass it, failed to break under it, and then shot up. Again, came back to test it, failed to break under it, and kept shooting up. And you'll see periodically, price will do that, and then it switches to a downtrend here. Price came up, we've got a shooting star, hit the 50 SMA, fell off. You'll see that consist consistently. 20 SMA as well can act as that. The 50 is definitely going to be stronger, and the higher the time frame, the more relevant these are going to be, the less noise there will be. But if you go into any trending move, you can see price is going to be respecting these. Even in between those moving averages, that's a dynamic support resistance zone as well. You can see price will respect it time and time again. Here it respected it. Here it broke past it, but then fell right under it. Same with here. Here it respected the 20. So it can be a very good um, uh, dynamic support and resistance for us. And as you're in a trending market, a good way to enter on uh, retracements is by using the moving average. If you got a strong downtrend here in the Japanese yen, you can see it's coming down. I mean, in the uh, US dollar Japanese yen, price comes up. You see it kiss this 50 SMA. You'd obviously be looking for other additional things like a candlestick pattern and uh, fundamentals, all kinds of stuff you could be using. But if you see price come up, touch this 50 SMA, fail to break it, and you know you're in a downtrend, that's a great sign right there. Price will most likely continue lower. Probability says that if you line up the factors, that that's a good probability that's going to keep going. So you can use the, super, the moving averages as a, a way of entering on um, retracements. On rallies, you, you can use them as support resistance zones, and uh, yeah, they're constantly changing with price, so they're, they're very good zones to watch in trending markets especially. In sideways moving markets, the moving averages are just going to be doing what you see here. This is somewhat of a downtrend, but you see how it's making this ribbon pattern here, and it's just switching back and forth, back and forth, and as you can see in this consolidation down here, moving averages are really only relevant when there's a trending move. If there's sideways price action, we're not going to be using moving averages. I'm a trend trader. I only trade with the trends. So you'll never see me entering into a choppy market like this ever. So moving averages are irrelevant in this kind of time period, and they're only relevant in trending moves. So the third and final thing that I use moving averages for, and even though the trend analysis is big time for me, this is most likely the biggest use I have for moving averages, and it's kind of not really known by many traders, but um, I'm a breakout trader, and one of the things that I'll do when I trade is I will have two different entries on a position. One of my entries I will cash in when a take profit is hit. The second entry when I enter later when there's more of a confirmation, I will trail and um, actively manage it, so to speak, letting the trade run to try to take more profits out of it. As being a trend trader, I need to let my winners run cut my losers short. That being said, I use the 20 SMA as a trailing stop. So let's just say, for example, um, let me see. let's just say right here. Let's say I entered short on this break of this base in a downtrend right here. I got into this and I entered short right here, right? So let's say I had a, I only take trades with a risk to reward of two to one. I use the average to range and different things to set that stuff. But let's just say I have a trade here and it is a two to one risk to reward about, let's say. So price comes down, hits my target right here. I'm going to take half of my position, the first entry out right here. I'm going to take profits right there. Then what I'm going to do with my second position is I'm going to use the 20 SMA and I'm going to trail a stop, trail my stop loss with the 20 SMA. So as price moves lower and lower, I'm going to be moving my trailing stop lower and lower. Price comes down here, hits my take profit. So now my stop is going to be above the 20 SMA right there, right? Price comes down lower, moving my stop with the SMA. As it goes down each period I'm going to be moving it lower and lower but then you can see I will finally get stopped out when price breaks above the 20 SMA so for example with this trade where I got out here with 60 pips in profit second position I would have ridden down to here and I would have gotten out with 107 pips in profit so it's almost 50 extra pips that I would have gotten 
by riding the trade down and following trailing my stop with the SMA. So that position management side of my SMA is my favorite use for it. And although I, I use it every single day with every single trade I ever make, and I will only determine trends using the simple moving average, the um, main reason that I like teaching people how to use it is for the stop management and the trade position management. So you know when to exit a trade that's going in your favor. Because you never know when a trade can just make a 100, 200, 300, 400 pip move. And if you take your profits and don't let the winners run, and you don't let them try to go and get as many much profit as you can out of it, you're going to be missing out. You really are. I don't care if you're using the 50 SMA as a trailing stop. If you're using the 15-minute chart, the daily chart, it doesn't matter. As long as you do it consistently and you track it and you find out that it's working, then that's all you need to do. That's it. It's all about consistency and finding what works. There's people that use the 9-period SMA, the 10, the 50, the 28, the 32, the 100, the 80, the 200, the 250. There's a million different SMAs and exponential moving averages you can use. All I say is use the same ones and stick with them, and you'll learn how they work. You'll learn how to use them, and you'll make them efficient. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Check out my website in the link below. You can check out my training. You uh, sign up for my training. I can teach you all my methods the way I teach all my traders. And I can teach you my trending tool and how I use the simple moving averages more. And um, if you'd like a trader assessment, just shoot me an email and we can get on Skype and do a free little session to see how much you know. You can get a little feel of how I teach and what I teach and what I offer. And we'll see if it's something we want to work together. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you soon.